What's up, you mummified remains of a dog or cat found in ancient Egypt around 1 BC? That wouldn't be ancient Egypt. Well, your mummified remains they found in 1 BC, basically. That's before, a uh, one year, what is that, one year before Jesus? That's an insane intro. I love them insane. I love that you hate them, and I hate if you love them. I'm on tour right now. I'm in the United States of America. Straight from the path.co for tickets. We're on tour with Silverstein and Avoid. Probably having a lovely time. Probably getting my cholesterol, my, what's the bad one, LDL? My LDL cholesterol is probably through the roof. Maybe I'm even dead from all the cholesterol. Who knows? But check out tickets at www.straightfromthepath.co. Get all these plugs out of the way. Oh, I don't like your band, Craig, but I like the way you talk. I'd love to get episodes early so I could hear them early. Oh, go to www.patreon.com forward slash the downbeat and give me one pound. Don't give me more than a pound, just one. Plus tax, right? But I can't do anything about the tax. It might be tax deductible if you're a podcaster. I don't know. Maybe you could put it through his research. I don't know. If you're putting one pound through as an expense, then maybe your business is not doing too well. If you don't want to go to patreon.com forward slash the downbeat and get me a sweet, 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 sweet pound, then go to www.thedownbe.at so it's about the downbeat, and get yourself a little bit of clothing, a little bit of cloth to warm you up on these cold days, unless you're in Australia, on these warm days, you could pick up a t-shirt if you're in Australia, or you could pick up a heavyweight hoodie if you're in Chicago, that's the coldest place I can think of, so cold in there, I wonder if I'm in Chicago today, who knows, can't be bothered to check my calendar to see if when this comes out, I'm going to be in Chicago, before we get on to my guest, Jake Smelly of Gideon, Unreal drummer, unreal style icon, unheard of style icon. Let me tell you about the sponsor of today's podcast, Displate. Displate make metal posters. They mount on the wall with a magnet. You just stick the magnet on the wall and you stick the metal poster on. Well, what's on that metal poster? Anything you want. They got slogany stuff. They got stuff to do with aliens. They probably got mummified dog stuff. If you Google it, I don't know. They got movie stuff, Akira. They got Call of Duty. They got bands like Gojira. They've got a downbeat store. We got a load of designs in there, probably restocked by now. No need to buy a frame. No need to look at little rubbishy bits of paper. No need to drill a hole and get your landlord all annoyed. Displate.com. Use the code downbeat. You can get 22% off one to three displays or 33% off three or more using that code downbeat supports the podcast supports me supports your walls looking sick af display.com code downbeat my guest this week is jake smelly of gideon unreal drummer again one of my mates that i made on tour they were on our headliner groove he's a groovesman if i'm honest with you the guy's got unreal groove like most episodes of the podcast where someone been lifting we went for a lift we went for a food then we went for a pod. Dream day for me, if I'm honest with you. We talked about he auditioned for a massive, massive pop slash rap artist. He also plays the drums for Zero, another rapper. Plays the drums in Gideon. He was wearing snakeskin boots throughout. So I do insist that you watch it on YouTube. I can't believe that I didn't mention them during the podcast. It's Jake Smelly from Gideon on the Downbeat Podcast. Jake Smelly. Yes, sir. Welcome to the downbeat. Holy shit. What's up? Cheers. Let's have a little cheers. If you're only listening to this, fuck you. This cost me a lot of money. But if you are only listening to this because you are blind or some other reason that's, you know, I'm very sorry. Um, I will explain. We are drinking. Uh, you've got a, a hard Mountain Dew. It's Dew Country, baby. <laughs> and I've got a Bud Light. Let's go. Which is, you know, it's a, that is... I support a, it. I support it too. It's a topic of contention. And I feel like, you know, my, one of my things with the downbeat 
first of all, we've had a lovely day. Have you had a lovely day? Lovely day. We'll go into our day. But one of my things with the downbeat is like, I've got a couple of sponsors, you know, by now, guys, I've got this plate. Look at these lovely displays. They're wonderful. Um, they're mounted with magnets, my bro. Wow. Therefore, keeping my deposit for the Airbnb, hopefully. Um, the one the one I don't have, and all the podcasts have them, a drink. Mm. So what I've been doing is I've just been drinking other companies, all the companies on here. Eventually I, one will stick. I want one to go, can you just only drink this? And I'll go, yes, give me $1,000 an episode. <laughs> No, uh, give me a thousand for a drink that I don't have to be like. And today's episode brought to you by Hard Mountain Dew. Or I would fucking do that. <laughs> like, give me a grand a month, easily. And then you're getting, a, you know, as a lot. You didn't want to know the figure because it would give you stage fright. But you know, it's good press for them. I feel like. Sorry, I moved away from the mic. I feel like I would drink anything for that amount of money. <laughs> Human piss. One cup. As long as it's cold and wet. Can, I mean, it's going to be wet. It comes out wet. At least cold. I don't think I could do warm piss. Warm piss would be definitely rougher. You could, could you drink? So it would have to, because obviously it's two episodes a month, two hours long. Could you drink cold piss for four hours a month for 1,000 USD? I would buy a pontoon in five minutes of, uh, yeah. I would. What's a pontoon? A pontoon boat. It's like a, it's like a back porch, mixed with a boat. So you can you can have parties oh, on it. Oh, we had a chat about this because I was talking about airboats. Some of them have grills built into them. You can fish. You can drink. You can piss. You know what I've just realised, and it's going to ruin my day, but I can't let it ruin my week. What is that? Someone is playing music right now in a different room, really loud. They were beatboxing earlier. God fucking damn it. This is one thing after another. They lost my fucking bags. We should just ask them to come in here. Come, come in here and shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, the noise gate will hurt. If you can't hear it, the noise gate did its thing. If you can hear it, just think of it as like lo-fi beats to yeah. relax slash study to in the background. Um, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. This was born out of, uh, you know, last night I was hanging out. You were here. We were doing... I turned around. I was actually on my way to Alabama, and I turned around to come see you. That's fucking awesome. And then we just hung out. We hung out exactly like this, but without any of the cameras. Nothing was recording. And then we were like, we should probably just do this tomorrow. I'm so thankful that you're having With me on the... here. It means a lot. I'm so thankful that this is, I think, the only episode I'm doing at this time of night, because they really, are, they really be singing next door. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we're here now. It's fine. If you can't hear it, then I'll stop talking about it because it's dead air. You were on your way to Alabama. Yeah. Born and raised Alabama? Yeah, uh, Bibb County. It's uh, somewhere, for anybody that knows anything about Alabama, it's between Birmingham and Tuscaloosa. The population of the town I'm from is around 1,200 people. It might, it might, might be boosted now. We might be up to 1,500. That's but so few people. It's uh, one traffic light, but it's uh, it's not even like a full traffic light. Like they got, it's what like the, the fuck did you just say one traffic light? Yeah, but it's like the blinking yellow one. Like, hey, slow down, y'all. Somebody might come through here, you know? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What, do you mean one traffic? How many roads you got? Four max. Uh, you got two main, I say main, they're, they're two lane highways, but there's a lot of back roads. And if you know the back roads, they're super fun to ride. Like when I get home from tour, I would just ride in complete silence and just go down these back roads and just, it's a, uh, it's like meditating. Wait, you said ride, like motorbike? No, no, no. Just like. In a car? In the Ford. You can ride in a car? Yeah. You don't ride one? I guess I don't think I'd ride one back home. <laughs> <laughs> I ride, I don't even think I'd ride a bus. You guys say I'm going to ride the bus, don't you? Maybe I said it wrong. I said, I, no, you didn't. And I think it's just very U.S. compared to like we wouldn't riding say. Riding down back roads, driving down back roads. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Alabama. I don't know anything about Alabama. I don't want to sound offensive, but in my head. Yeah. It's especially you telling me there's one, there's one traffic light. In my head, I've got, you ever see the episode of the turtles when... <laughs> 
they get on the like airboats <laughs> and it's like a swamp. You love swamps. I love swamps. You love swamps. But like as I had a bump, so I, I had Kubla Khan. Yeah. And they I was asking them, are you from swamp country? And they didn't really, they said there's some, but not really. But is Alabama like real swamp country? It can be in, in LA, which is lower Alabama. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> it can be because uh, there's parts of Alabama that actually reach all the way down there beside Florida. So there oh. are there are some. I There's even one kind of close to where I live, but it's it's more so like a dried up pond that just looks like a swamp now because it's just uh but how big is shitty how big is this what the because the pond ponds are small to me yeah it's it's small so there's areas where it gets real marshy and there's uh but nowhere really around me so it's uh i don't know but i love a good swamp i love louisiana I are love, they swampy oh they're, can you, can they're you say, the swamp people. Can you say swampy? Can you say swamp people? <laughs> it's a little derogatory. Is it actually? Yeah. Like for people from the South? Yeah, but they love it. So it's like the C word in Australia. Yeah. What up, swampy? Yeah. What's up, my swamp? Uh, you'd have to ask Ra Randy LaBeouf. He's, he's from uh He's from, he, he's Louisiana. from real Swamp County. Yeah, you have to ask him. This is now just a Swamp podcast it's for fans <laughs> of Swamps. I've said the word Swamp so many times now, it sounds fake. I think the only plus about Alabama is uh, because there's at least there's more going on in Birmingham now and stuff. And we got college football. Everybody loves either Alabama or, or, or Auburn. But I think because you grow up so minimalistic. I, f I feel like it, it gives you a, an imagination. So there's a lot of good music that comes from Alabama. Have you heard of Muscle Shoals? No. A lot of crazy history there with like uh, Aretha Franklin, um, the Stones. Wait, was, wait, what is Muscle Shoals? It's a, uh, it's a city in Alabama that has... Uh, That's a cool fucking name. Yeah. And there's apparently a lot of really good energy there for like uh, people will go just to write because they say there's something magical about it. Whatever you want to think, you know. But I, I personally, I've, I've thought about making a trip there just just to write to see if it helps. Um, but a lot of really good music comes from there. Um, uh, you know the song when a man loves a woman. When a man loves a woman. Does it sound like I know it? <laughs> what do you think, bro? Uh, anyway, carry on. Yeah, there's a. It it just it goes back. There's a lot of a lot of good music that comes from there. Um, How far is that from you? About an hour and a half. Yeah, get down there. Bring a fucking. What, wait, what do you want to write there? Do you want to write because you are, if people don't know, primary or soul lyricist of Gideon, as well as hitting them tubs. I do, uh, I do as much as I possibly can, um, but that guy next door is hooting, hooting, he's and a, a ho he is hooting and a hollering. It sounds like a who are the what's the band that sang uh, "Who Let the Dogs Out"? Baja, Baja the Boys, ba the Baja Men. That's who's over there. That is the fucking the Bashville men. Now I need a Baja Blast. But we got Baja Blast. I know. I'll finish this one first. I think you know what the thing is though. There's only one of the Bajas left. Mm, you can have it. No, we're gonna split it. <laughs> sip, sip, sip. It is the it is the best fucking one. Um, but, but no, they they uh, we actually there there are certain songs where I'll be like, okay, I feel already that something's, I feel a connection here. I feel like there's uh there's something in me that can come out in this song. But there's also songs where Caleb, uh, Tyler, and all of us uh have the the capability to do so i just uh i've been writing lyrics since i was before way before i started playing drums and so it's something that i feel like uh i just love to do it at the end of the day i would rather i would rather spend all of my time writing lyrics than than playing drums at all really now they're knocking they're hooting hollering and knocking and i'm gonna freak out but at the same time what did i fucking expect but yeah look i write uh lyrics for gideon and i play drums for gideon and i've been in that band since uh 
it's actually it was the only band I had ever been in until right after the pandemic. And then I started, uh, I just had the urge to only play music for a living because the pandemic taught me that, uh, that's, uh, that's what I want or nothing at all. So, uh, yeah, I've been just trying to play as much music as possible with, uh, I play with Zero Nine Thirty Six, and I played with a buddy of mine named Drayton Farley. He's what, more Americana country stuff. What is the Nine Three Six in Zero? What does it mean? Uh, the time he was born. Kind of sick. It looks like a Bible verse. I yeah, that's it. what I thought it was. I thought it was like a Stone Cold Three Sixteen. Yeah, I did too at first. What was, is what is the Three Sixteen? What does that mean? Is that a Bible verse? Yeah, I think that's a Bible verse. I thought he it was says, just like, and he says like, and the Lord said, I'll kick your ass or something like that. No, nah, he says, uh, he said, because, uh, uh, what does he say? He says, uh, Stone Cold said so, right? I guess it's his verse. Wait, oh, I'll you, kick your ass. That's what it says. Yeah, something like that. Are you, are you a Bible woman? Ex-Bible woman? Dude, this is, this is a rabbit hole, but I, uh. I definitely studied it a large part of my life, for sure. I know some things. Recreationally or growing up, like, because uh, in my head, the swamp with the airboats. Yeah, there's a Bible has, in there. There's, <laughs> no, there is, there's a one church, one traffic light, mm. and everyone's at the church. Yeah, so uh, the first church uh, I remember going to as a kid, so my dad was a... He was a rock and roller. I uh, met my mom playing in clubs and stuff like that. And um, they started going to church whenever I was maybe five or six, very young. I, I don't remember exactly when, but uh, the first church we went to was actually very like, you've seen like the crazy fire and brimstone like uh, type churches. Yeah. It was very much Are like they the that. ones where like people they're people need healing and they go up to the thing and no. they're shaking so okay what's the fire and brimstone one it, basically uh, i lump them in in my do head do you know do you know about the great awakening how like all the revival tent revivals and stuff like that no, hit me people basically imagine a preacher sweating really like profusely i've got it and yelling that if you don't repent you're gonna burn in a lake of fire for eternity how long is this set <laughs> Like, no, I'm serious. Oh, like, easily. How long is he doing that for? Probably hour to two hours. Holy shit. That must be draining for him as well as you. Yes. And in that church, actually, the only music allowed to be played in it was either from piano or guitar. Only stringed or in instruments. With drums of the devil. The devil. That's the devil's music, boy. Uh, my Boston CD. Can I do that? Can I do a southern accent? Oh, you're perfect at it. i mean i'm you know, i know i'm great at it but i mean is it going to offend people oh the disclaimer is it's a white southern person <laughs> <laughs> so i'm allowed to do it or not uh i'll give you a i'll give you the pass <laughs> you can give me a pass yeah hell yeah brother <laughs> wait that was more texas i'm sorry uh that was uh, sorry that was more an absolutely perfect texas accent i don't even know what my accent is anymore because i go on the road and people say like uh, you got that sweet drawl boy they they say i sound country but then i go home and my dad's like you forget where you come from boy so uh well i get that because i talk to so many americans yeah my accent especially when i'm talking to americans has a little it's super softened oh uh -huh. you might, might not even hear it but it is definitely softer than when i speak back home when I'm back home, I'm like, oh, mate, how you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, boy, let's go. That blows my mind. <laughs> but then it goes, but now I live in fucking Scotland, where everyone is Scottish. No, Scottish have crazy slang as well. Oh, big time. You want to learn something? What do you know? I know some Philly slang. I learned that recently. John. 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 Mitt. What's Mitt? A face. Right? Crazy. Okay, so in Scotland... A, a like your head mm. i believe it might be your face as well is your coupon <laughs> right but it's it's spelt like coupon yeah like you're like a discount head yeah <laughs> but it just means your face you got um discount head let me try and think of my some of my favorites because i i live i live my girlfriend's scottish 
my parents are Scottish, mm. but they don't live there, but I moved up there. So that's some fucking Freud shit. Like I love Scotland. It's definitely because when I would come home from tour, living in England, even though my parents also lived there, didn't feel like home or coming home or playing shows in England didn't feel like home because home to me is Scottish accents. You felt the call of the wild pulling you back. Yeah, which is so weird. And I just fucking love it. Like I could be having a terrible day and I'll go to the fucking shop, buy something and I'll hear some like little woman who sounds a bit like my mum talking a bit like my mum. Mm. And I'm just like, home. It's like a blanket. But I'm like 400 miles away from my actual mum. <laughs> What's she up to? I don't much. You need to call her. Oh, yeah, I can, yeah, I do. Give her a call. I do. Thank you. That's that sweet southern charm, boy. We all need to call our moms, man. How often do you call your mom? She, this is actually on my list to call my mom more. Yeah, it's something. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes on on tour, you know how it is. Like you get you get going, you're hanging with the boys. I I struggle with it more when I'm gone. Um, but as soon as I see mama pop up, I try, I try to answer it. You know? Oh, I'm never turning down a call no. for my mom. Yeah. But I definitely need to be more like, but my problem is that I fucking complain a lot. Me too. And I don't want to be like, especially my to, mom and just to complain. Yeah, especially to mom. It's easy to just be like, uh, I'm okay, but you know, it can it, be better. It, this is happening, this yeah. is happening, blah, blah, blah. And then also like, I don't know. I don't, I'm so busy. Not too busy to call, but like... You're a busy I, man. I don't like talking about myself constantly, but then in my head, I'm like, my mum wants to know. But they also watch the podcast, so they, they're pretty fucking up to date. They probably watch more episodes than anyone else. That's sweet. Uh, my parents are probably going to watch this as well. We'll see. Okay, well, uh, you you don't say anything insane, and I'll say all the insane shit. How do they fit? So if they were... I'm assuming... Mm -hmm big church people yeah i think my mom really loves she loves the community in church so we left that church and ended up going to like a more contemporary church which is, which is actually where i found the drums or they found me honestly um but nice my mom loved uh the community there and she kept nursery a lot she loved all the babies and stuff like that so i think I think she misses it. Me and my dad have this similar... So wait, they've stopped going? Yeah. And I partially blame myself for that. What happened, bro? The rock? Was it the rock? The devil's rock? It was the devil's music. Drawing um, you away from that sweet, sweet embrace of God. Yeah. Yeah. I, I basically... The way I think my dad and I both look at it is like, man is so... We're shitty. So, so why, if there, if there's a God and you're supposed to have a relationship with this, uh, all knowing being, then why would a man need to, uh, have anything to do with that? So when I basically decided to stop going and that I needed to go on like a, a journey to find myself, yeah. Um, and figure out what I actually believe or is this all indoctrinated in, into me. And um, I only believe this because I've been told to. Uh, I think I've come to the conclusion that um, I don't want church or like some racist asshole from the South telling me like, uh, you know, this is how it's done. And I th it's been really healthy for me, I think. Because I definitely, I'm still in the mode of, after stepping away from it, I can say as a 31-year-old that I definitely like. I thought you were 32. I'm 31. I'll be 32 in September. You lied to me, bro, to no. make myself feel younger. I asked you earlier and you said 32. I went, that's pretty close. 31. No, you now. said 32 earlier and I was like, hey, I will be this year. Oh, so You didn't correct me. Classic. You're speeding me Same up. Same lying. <laughs> anyway. It's a white lie. So though. what, do, do you, do you believe in God? Yeah. As a entity or just a higher power or what? What's your deal? Because I've got, I used to be super atheist mm -hmm. my whole life. Now I've seen some shit, man. Yeah. That I'm like, this, there is something outside of yep. this. That's where I'm at with it. But I don't know what the fuck it is. It could be we're in a fucking video game that yeah. someone made, but that would technically fall under God because 
they're, it, that would mean they created if, us. everything is, if not predetermined, was at one point determined. Uh -huh. And now I'm just like. And you know, that's, that's actually like in the book is that we were uh, predestined and all this stuff. But that's, dude, it's such a, I don't know if you want to go down that rabbit hole, but I will say that I'm like, I'm a very, of course I want to go down I'm, a, rabbit hole. I'm a spiritual person. Sorry. I believe, I believe in energy and uh, actually, I, I feel like if, if you're a musician or actually anybody chasing a dream, I feel like you have faith. You just don't realize that yet. It's, yeah, it's like you're, there's nothing there and you're, you have this thought or this dream of like what you want to do, but it's not there and you, you put it into fruition, you know what I mean? Or at least try like hell to, but I definitely have faith and I'm learning like that it, it, me it has a way deeper meaning than what, uh, than what just church has to do with it. Um, it has to do with, with everything, I think. Uh, and you know that through like the we're talking about the you know my mag magical prowess magic stuff yeah my magical prowess like being able to visualize something and believe something that isn't there in front of you you can't touch it well that we could we could dive a little bit deeper onto how we got into that because we were talking about it because you wanted to know because I talked about it before on oh I'm the super podcast, fascinated by that stuff about my practice of magic yeah with a K. Um, and then you told me about a book that you were listening to, which was just about success. Yeah. How to think and grow rich and nothing to do with magic, but everything in that book is black magic. They've just like, you were telling me and I was like, this is everything I do. Mm -hmm. And you were telling me, and, th and now in my head, I'm like, either this thing, which is, you know, without going too deep, if you want to go if you want to go deep on it, do some Googling, but I mean, for the listener, but like either two separate sources of people or multiple separate sources of people that realize this willing the universe to bend to your will, like mm. willing things to happen actually works. Yep. And they thought, and they figured it out independently. And you know, this person calls it, what was, what's it called? The book that, how to think and grow rich. Yeah, this person calls it that. Some people call it's it like... Napoleon Hill, I believe. Is, is. Some people call it like positive mental attitude. Other people call it black magic. Either all these things, these people realized it worked and then now they're trying to teach it or they all know it's black magic. And it's a mask and for it. Yeah, and they're like, I can't sell black magic to people. I'm going to lose the fucking... I'm going to lose all the God people. Dude, so I was doing the... Uh like manifestation meditation before I would go to sleep. Exactly the same, bro. Dude, I felt creepy some nights. And I felt so bad for my girlfriend, Beverly, because she would, she would be like trying to sleep. And I would be like, I would have the phone like just sitting by my head. And he's like, I want you to smell what's around you. I want you to feel it. I want you to believe everything. And just every, everything you want to happen, you have to really believe it. And it's just getting it into your subconscious. But, dude, there were nights where I was like, what door am I opening right now? Mm -hmm. Because I, I started seeing things happening, and I'm like, what is this, though? Yeah. And it's, it's the same with the so the, the two that I practice, talked about on the podcast before, sigil magic and sex magic. Yeah, the and Crowley stuff. The same thing. The manifestation, the willing it, like the, the equivalent in – your parents are going to be so annoyed that you're talking to me now because I sound <laughs> evil. I don't do anything evil with it. The, my, my dad listens to Zeppelin and all that stuff. Oh, so he sigils all over the place. <laughs> so like your one was the manifestation meditation, which is... That's where I kind of started with it. Which is repeating what you want, really thinking it, really believing in it. And sigil magic is exactly the same except you are drawing your manifestation and for me that makes me really think and believe it while i'm doing it and i'm like creating the sigil mm. and i'll every stroke of the pen or even when i'm doing it with a finger i do a fucking catch up on if i'm making a baking sandwich you bet your ass i'm making a sigil when i'm thinking about manifesting manifesting stuff while i'm doing it ever since you told me this last night i can't get it out of my head 
You know what? Like, I, like? I thought it was so cool. We could do a. I, mean, <laughs> we could, I could give a small lesson here if anyone wants to know how to do it. It's not. A, it's not a big secret. I think. I think it's cool. I've, I've always been like a very curious, a curious kid. You know what I mean? But I think that. Uh, I think it comes down. I think this is what it comes down to, is. Like if you believe in hating something, it's like uh, the rain and the sun. Like you, if there's one, there's, you know, you got the other uh, dark and light and all that stuff. Mm. I feel like there's love and then there's like hate. And I definitely feel like uh, those are real things. Um, and so I, th I think it comes down to like what what is uh, pushing this, you know what I mean? And, and it can be like an evil thing or it can be something that like, because one of the things in the book is like, uh, also you need to, to think about like how you're going, once you have in possession, like uh, whether it be money or whatever you're, you're after, how are you going to give it back? Mm. And I think that might be something a little brighter. So in magic... There's something called the threefold rule, mm. which is if you do anything malevolent with the magic. So if your manifestation is negative oh. on, on anyone else, the energy that you give that, you will get back three times. Uh, it's karma. Uh, exactly. Yeah. But like I've seen it and I've had friends who also practice magic seen it. I've done it and I've seen the other side of it where I've been like, I've, it's not been like super malicious but you know I've got some I've got some revenge and I've manifested something that I wanted to happen to someone to someone else did it once it happened and my life fucking fell apart immediately and three things happened to me like afterwards it was and fucking it, insane so it, did, it came in threes yeah and I was just like and that's the why fucking, is that a thing that's the thing as well isn't it bad luck comes in three and everybody knows it and everyone knows it but no one ever goes like is this like a, like the laws of nature? Is there just extra laws that we haven't been scientifically tested? You think about like gravity or something. Every every action in science has an equal and opposite reaction. Yes. Why can't that exist for like emotions and feelings and energy that you put out against other people? I think it has to. Um, or at least that's what that's what we've witnessed happen. You know. Um, what what started uh it's got so deep uh, whose podcast is it sorry go ahead. well when when did you get started in that um if i could if i might on your podcast uh, yeah on my podcast this or, is the downbeat this is the upbeat with uh this is the backbeat this is the jake's jake, jake, jake smell is backbeat <laughs> that was a good voice yeah, dude. that was me by the way that was not if you're just <laughs> if you're just listening to this that was that was me and it was not jake um i know it sounded exactly like him um always had an interest in the like occult mm -hmm. or like stuff that was that was happening but never talked about and then i had a couple of friends who told me and a couple of like bands that i got into and i was like wait what are you talking about and then I went down, I went down the Crowley rabbit hole, but like, historically, he was kind of a piece of shit, but. Oh, dude, the, like the, where the animals are involved and stuff. The, even just like the way he treated other people, but like. He was known as like the most evil man of his time. Yeah, but he, he definitely wasn't. You know, Pretty sure he's alive at the same time as many dictators. Um, <laughs> but it was like that, like satanic panic and stuff like that, just fully gets my attention and then yeah. when you read into it and it's like it's not satan worshippers is not a thing yeah you've got it's like, like more about self right yeah you've got like wiccans and you have magic and you have you know satanists uh -huh. so crowley is about will and you know there is you know he talks about celestial beings and stuff being part of it but it's not like, uh, you know, 
I'm trying to get a demon to kill a bunch of people. Yeah. Like I'm sure a lot of the stories told about Crowley, I'm sure you know how things go. Like once they make it down the line, like you whisper something in somebody's ear and when it gets to the other end, it's it's something else. I'm I'm sure something like that happened. But I heard Jimmy Page bought that dude's yeah, see, castle. Yeah, see all of that, like why were they so interested? All yeah. that shit's super interesting to me. Right. So I'm that way because of Led Zeppelin, I checked out Crowley and everything. But also, they made me go down the blues rabbit hole. And I found Robert Johnson, the dude that sold his soul to the devil at the crossroads and everything. And I was just, like, they flew from, they're from the UK, right? Zeppelin, yeah. Yeah. So they flew all the way to Mississippi to this dude's, like, childhood home just to write songs there. I met Jimmy Page once. Shut up. And by met, I mean, I was in the same bar as him and I was too scared to say anything. <laughs> but he... That counts. He was with a a lady. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was his daughter or his girlfriend, but she was young. <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah. But he, I I think even, so it could have been his, his girl because I think that's a, that was a thing with him where he... We need a Jamie to pull that up. Listen, I look, I'm not going to get in the way of love as long as it's legal. Right. Um, but let's go. Let's find out. I love the way that when you Google Jimmy Page girlfriend, it comes up 2023. Whoa! What's, what's the age difference? Woo! Wait! Is oh, it, Lord! Is it Daddy Page? Oh, Father Page. Father John Page. Um, it is... <laughs> So, all right, what's your rule on this? Now we get into toxic bro oh, podcast. No. Not that you have one. I know you have a girlfriend. But like in terms of, so the rule that I've always heard and then when I apply it, I'm like, oh, I, I guess it kind of makes sense. So not, I'm not saying I'm not condoning this, mm. but the rule where it is not creepy is I think it's half your age plus seven comes out as not creepy. Bro, I'm terrible at math. So so what does that mean? Let's say if you're 32, that's 16 plus, that's 23. Okay. Now, I feel like when, when you're at these relatively young ages, to be honest with you, it's a little bit twisted because some people aren't like men, like mature until like 24. But let's take it from an old man. He is 70. He's 70 seven so yeah. let's pretend he's 78 because my math sucks as well you always round up so he's 78 mm. half of 78 is 39 39 nine. yeah your math yeah. is way better than mine it's 39 jesus i've got b in math as well is the half of so it's 39 i think i know it nine is, and nine it is 39 yeah, you, you got it you got it so it's 39 plus seven would be 46 yeah right and he's 77 so that wouldn't be that creepy right but she's 20 what she's 32 ah. so that's half his age minus five see i'm i'm i think where my mind goes in this is like i don't want to dog on him because no they're probably in love he is rich, but, <laughs> but they're probably he got riffs too, though. He you know? does he still have riffs? Yeah, bro. He is up. he still busting out riffs? Got like new be. riffs, bro. Gotta be with the little violin bow. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was doing something else there. Thirty-two is though that she's old enough. Like I, thirty-two. That's her decision. It's not like, bro. If she was in her twenties, that's rough. Well, think about this: when Jimmy Page was thirty-two. Go on. Are you going to cancel it? How old was she? It was none. She was none. <laughs> she was none years <laughs> she old. She was none. I know she was five. See, that's right. No, she wasn't. She was minus five. Negative five. I, that, I know that she's not negative five anymore. She, but, I, but that's kind of where my mind be. goes. Impossible to be. Yeah, but I feel like 32, she can make her own decisions. Who am I to say? I However, can't, I can't tell her. If I was 32, I would. Pacino. <laughs> have you done have you have you seen this? Have you heard about this? No. Pacino. Again, I'm not dogging on these these old couples because you know there are some people like a daddy. Yeah. It's a thing. And I, Pacino as well, like, because I this came up with my girlfriend and I was like, do you know 
what age? Is he still going? Bro, he had a kid like last month. That's some Theo Vaughn shit. He. Okay. He had a kid. He is 83 years old. He had a kid in June. Mm. So that shit's still working. How? I um, mean, maybe, I mean, Pacino, it, it might just be in the gene. In the genos. In the genos. The genos. Um, again, I don't, wanna, I don't want people to come for me. She's 29. He's 83. But it's Al Pacino, though. Right. It's not delivery. It's <laughs> Pacino. It's Pacino. Yeah. Because, like, watching the Pacino... I haven't seen a Pacino film recently, but, like, I could see the appeal. Even when Pacino was, like, 60. Hot. Hot and, like... Carrying a gun, for sure. Hot, carrying a gun, just fucking... Cigarette. Just just a badass, so I can yeah. see. Having a kid at 83, though, it's like... That kid, realistically, now I'm not wishing anything, is not going to know his dad. 83 is like, when you're 83, you you can be flicked over. Right. How's he even, I don't know. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's definitely on the blue shoes. This episode is not brought to you by Bluetooth, but guess what? I would take it. You would. I've been take. I've been taking boner pills. I almost. I almost took one before we went to the gym, and I, I got too scared. I got. I don't think I can do it. I've been disclaimer, in case Bluetooth does end up sponsoring the podcast. I've been taking boner pills for prostate health, and pumps at the gym. Right. Mainly for prostate health. I got like a fucking my dad had prostate cancer. I'm doing everything that the the technology. There's a even slightest bit of research whether like this could benefit. I'm like I'm 30. I'm gonna nip this in the fucking bud right now. I respect that too. We had we had that talk. Um, I would try it. I just like. It doesn't give you a boner though. It 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 allows more. You know what a pump supplement in a fucking pre-workout yeah. is and they're always like nitric ox oxide boosting yeah all that shit that's what it is that's what it is so it's like it, when you get a boner this is like a man episode when you get a boner <laughs> i love how you say boner dude <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you about the boners on these things they could cut Pac <laughs> pacino's next wedding cake no they're fucking rock solid <laughs> drillers which was just a side of it. I was taking it for prostate health. And like, because someone said, like, you take a small dose. It's not like you take the full dose that like an older dude would take to get a bone. You take a small, like a micro dose every day. Mm. And it's supposed to be good for your prostate. But it do be giving you those boners. You don't get the boner, but when you do get a boner, it's like, bam! But what if, what if you get, what if you, what if you, you get them easily and then you're just in the then elevator you're getting rock solid. It gets easy. packed in there. There's five people before you know it. There's a kid in there. <laughs> <laughs> Touches. You, you, you know, but no, this, is, this, is, this is the thing. He's like, I want to push the button. It's over. What floor is it, mom? And then all of a sudden, you're no, in trouble. No, because you needed to have found that sexy to have the boner. You don't get the random boners. Because you, you, you didn't as a kid, you don't you don't no, remember no, no. that as a kid. No, you get I the, fucking, the I, I get random bonus. The NRBs. The, yeah, I get them. <laughs> but my point is, you were you were getting it anyway. This was just going to supercharge it. Gotcha. It's not going to make you attracted to kids. <laughs> just a tune up. Just a tune up. Yeah, it's rerouting some nitric oxide. No. <laughs> Nitrous. <laughs> Nitrous oxide. Anyway, enough about my boner pills and my sex magic. Uh, you was repping them out in there, though, bro. I was like, I should have took the blue chew. It's the fucking bone, but and guess what? I got a fucking sweet pump out of it. Come on. I don't think there's any other benefits. Oh, lowers your blood pressure as well. <laughs> it's fucking great. It's a miracle I, drug. I do have high blood pressure, oh, too. Oh, my good God. Yeah. You need to get on that shit. 31, brother. Blood pressure is I'm also trying... I'm trying to... I wish I needed it for an actual boner because then I could be like a lower the stigma boner guy. Mm. And I, I said this to you earlier. I didn't think, I thought my boners were <laughs> adequate. 
they were getting the job done. And then now Little they're like, did you know? now they're fucking a lethal weapon. Yeah, an Olympian. Yeah. Baby. Um, a little monster truck in your jeans. Baby? Yeah. Got a fucking a slight angle on mine, though. A little Arnold Schwarzenegger in there. No, yeah. Not crazy. Yeah. I like smashed it once. This is toxic male podcast. Yeah. But I'm drinking a Mike Bud Light, and they wouldn't do that, so. You ever try to, like, break any? Never mind, dude. Let's get off something. Try to break, what, a pushy? No, like, uh, I don't know, like, you finish one of them Bud Lights, and you're just like, uh, let's see if I can break something with it. No, because I've had, I had a penis injury before from you broke it from sexing i did something to it and it was not right for like you sprained its ankle i, I basically yeah I, I i did something i banged it and it was fucking not right for a while it didn't look weird it was just fucking hurt i was like something is going wrong here i just waited <laughs> the it out tennis elbow and I, wait, I waited it out came out all right damn got a little fucking crook in it now but nothing crazy hey cheers to that brother thank you brother uh should we talk about music <laughs> yeah we done magic and bonus the thing is though that's it, no one likes the fucking music chat yeah like 10 percent of the people go oh i learned something other people are like i laughed my ass off at the bone a bit hopefully right and then i went immediately I to buy some bonus uh eighth note triplets oh bro i love those <laughs> I've been doing this for five years now. I've had every music conversation that can happen. Yeah, and I'm... Other than you... Can we talk about your audition that you got? You want to talk about it or not? Or I can will. just edit it out. Yeah, so I was, uh, at, I was in Daytona. Um, it was about midnight, and I get a call from my friend. He said, uh, you have 48 hours. And that's all he said at first. I was just like, bro, what? 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 to what and he said uh he said you need to learn three songs in 48 hours and i said let me stop you right there i'm, I'm on the road and i'm i've never been that guy i'm not saying i can't be that guy but i've never been that guy that's like let me learn something like today and then go just like try to nail it um had he told you the artist by this point uh no he wouldn't tell me at first and uh and then eventually uh, he just kept telling me that it that it was important, and uh, and then he told me it was for Post Malone, and Ooh, who been hollering? Dream gig, dream gig, for fucking all of us. Dream uh, gig. G wagon, G wagon, G wagon, G wagon. All the housewives pulling up. Uh, but yeah, it's a dream gig for me. And the dude likes uh, he likes heavy music. He likes uh, '90s country. When was this? Uh, when I auditioned? Yeah. It must have been, I think it was May. So, yeah, it was this year. Yeah. Because I, I saw there's, no, there's a guy playing for him now, and I was like, who's this? I think, I think his, his name is also like the Italian version of my name. Giacardo. Oh. No, see, I, I, thought, I don't know. I made, I made that up. Oh, I thought it was like uh, Yaakov. And probably, I don't know. He's, he's, he's probably great. He's going to beat my ass when he hears He's this. He's probably great. But I saw it and I was like, you could have anyone. <laughs> like, I don't, he's like a great, you know, great drummer. But I was that's like, it was, just, what, it was just out, it was like an Italian yeah. guy. I was like, that's a weird choice. Yeah, like what made you uh, fly this dude out Maybe from he's Italy. the best fucking dude on earth. And could be, sweetheart. Friends. It probably is that. And obviously he's a fucking treader or else you wouldn't have got the fucking gig. I did, I did hear that they, like, uh, whenever, uh, I sent it in. I'd had to do it during sound check, by the way. So we had to. Okay. Yeah, but you drop. I drop fucking everything. I'd quit a tour to do that audition. Right. I, I gotta go home for a fucking day. We were on tour with uh, Bullet for My Valentine, and they're. Uh, my tears don't fall. They <laughs> crash around me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's me getting a fucking copyright strike because that was crash perfect. around me crash around me anyway you were on tour with <laughs> crash around me <laughs> they were super nice though and uh yeah he was just like uh do whatever you gotta do uh this other band uh you know they might get irritated but i uh I, he was like i believe in you and i want you to get in here and i want you to smash this shit 
So I felt like I had everybody on, like everybody on my back. I think if I'm the type of person, I think I would have like crumbled under the pressure, but I had like my friends around me just being like, dude, you, you just have, you have to do it. So, uh, all the Gideon were like, bro, do it. Yeah. I mean, it's part, it's fucking post Malone. Zero was I think like, fucking yeah, Stray, would, Stray would be like, okay. Yeah. But yeah, uh, learn the songs. Um, I wish I would have picked some different songs. Would you pick Rockstar? No. I kind of wish yeah, I would have. You fucked up there. Yeah. Um, I did Chemical, I did Cooped Up, and I did Morning. I, I had to pick Cooped Up because the Return of the Mac beat. It's fucking sick. Uh, yeah, but you should have done Rockstar. Should have. I, th I think I'm still going to. But I, I was also trying to think of like, What's something I could... I wanted to send new songs because that's what he's going to be touring off of. But he's never not going to play Rockstar as a thing. I get your reason for maybe thinking not because you also don't... Well, that's like his biggest fucking And everybody's going to send him Rockstar. And and he might go... I mean, the guy, this guy doesn't... It, oh, he's picked the most obvious fucking song. Right. However, you should have picked it. You should have yeah. been in there. But dude, I remember seeing... So first of all, he covered like Sturgill Simpson and brad paisley and i've seen videos of him singing like john michael montgomery with uh i don't know a single word you just said really and you don't know sturgill simpson does he live on a swamp uh maybe maybe he does uh great artist great lyricist listen to turtles all the way down is this country music yes but turtles all the way down it's is gonna, literally a psychedelic country song about what does that even sound like Dude, it sounds like uh, it sounds like I feel like my life, honestly. So I I, re I relate to it, but he says uh, basically how he's he's met met God in this way, in this way, in this way, but every time like he opens the Bible, he's just reminded by. Uh, some pain caused by some man in the sky. But then he says, uh, marijuana, LSD, psilocybin, DMT, they all change the way I see that love's the only thing that's ever saved my life. This is country music. Yes. I thought country music was like, if you don't like my flag, y'all gonna get back out of my country. That's th that is the country music that, uh, unless it's like, unless I'm coming back from Canada, and I'm playing Toby, uh, Toby, Toby Keith. Keith. See, I know Toby Keith. We'll put a boot in your ass. See, that, okay, yeah. that's the only country music I know. Okay, yeah, there's... I, I want to talk about me. I want to talk, talk about, about I. I want to talk about number one. Do you know why I know that song? We played it 400 times in a row on four separate drives. I like talking about you, 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 usually. That's fantastic. You know what I mean? Through this mic as well. Anyway, carry on. Sorry. There's some great country music out there. Uh, my favorite country music are the like the storytellers, the one that are like Mike. Okay, John Michael Montgomery. He's still on the Post Malone story though. Okay. Anyways, I you feel saw him like, cover all these guys. Yes, and I was like, this is a dude. He gets it. That, yeah, a lot of my friends like coming up in in the scene and everything. Nobody listened to this that that kind of stuff. And I felt like I was kind of in the closet, like a, a closet uh, country lover for a long time. I remember Tom, dude, I remember the first straight tour we did and Tom came up and uh, I, I didn't understand New York humor at all. And Tom comes up to the window and he goes, hey, y'all, are y'all ready for the tour? And I was like, oh, shit, they really think we're stupid. And you took this. That's why I'm like, am I being offensive? No, no, no. It's the same way people go to, hello, mate, to me. Right. And right, I'm right. like. I think it's funny as fuck. No, but as like a 19, 20, 20 year old kid, I One was One traffic like, like town Yeah, kid. I was like, bro, I'm like, I don't know if I'm, is this where I'm supposed to be? Like, is this, a, is this okay? So it's cool. What I'm trying That's to say cute, is like, all I'm trying to say is, I feel like, uh, I, I like, I like Austin. I like him. I like what he stands for. He's a very positive dude. And... Yeah, I want to be best friends with him. Yeah, I want to hug him, dude. I got, I never met him because there's that video of him, Brian Garris, singing Damien. Yeah. And. So sick. So 
me and him had a back and forth on Stray's Twitter and on my Twitter for a, for a while. And then he came to, we played Reading Festival together, gave him a bunch of merch. My ex, me and her were having like a whole thing and I had to leave the festival. <laughs> and uh, the rest of the boys were just in like they hung off. out with him for the whole day. God. And like Don't I got you... I got like a passing hello, small interaction. And they literally played beer pong with him in the compound for So you just like dapped him up and dipped? I didn't even I dapped it up on the internet uh, and then brief hello. See, here's the thing. Nothing. Here's the thing gutted life isn't it doesn't have to be that hard it doesn't have to be that hard i heard this uber driver tell me one time he said i heard this i was listening to this uh podcast where this lady maybe uh, I, I think he said talk show i think it was like an actual radio station but uh it was this lady saying uh i want to make i want to make his dick harder than his life Bone pills. <laughs> Sorry, carry, carry on. I want to make his dick harder than his life. I don't. Wow. Okay. Mom, close your ears real quick. Dad, you get it. Uh. And he said, and she said, uh, and I want him to make uh, my pussy wetter than my cheeks. Like talking about tears. That's such a fucking awesome sentence. When I heard it, I was like, I did just make sense, but. Dude, imagine if that's what that's life was like. That's fucking insane. You would have you would have hung out with Post, brother. But I'm sorry that that actually bums me out for you. But also, cheers, brother. Because cheers. I mean, you obviously didn't get it because you're here. I'm just. You didn't get the gig, or you don't know that you didn't get the gig. The, the Italian guy's still playing for him, so. Right. Which makes me think: Was he playing for him then? Um, wait, maybe we can't even fucking talk about it. Maybe he's trying to kick that guy out. Maybe the last. Well, the last I heard was that. Wait, are we gonna? I don't know. I don't know if I can say any of this, but I'll well, say we're it. gonna do it. Um, the last I heard is that he had a friend. So I think they're really good friends. He had a friend that he had already confirmed for his upcoming tour, which he's on. Uh, oh, so this is pre-Italian guy. Yeah, because that Italian guy's new. I yeah. hope he's Italian. I'm just calling him Italian guy. He said uh, he's bringing his friend on this next tour, but he switches musicians out a lot. He saw the videos. Uh, he says that you guys have mutual friends from Warp Tour and stuff, and um, and that I am in the uh, the loop. So, God, imagine if you get that. I'm trying to manifest it. It's it's. I'm gonna be hundred. Trying was the I'm wrong be, word to use there. I am uh, manifesting. I'm gonna be a hundred percent honest with you. I really want it. Oh, I, <laughs> I don't, but I don't have. I think I would have had a phone call if I was in the running whatsoever, because he still follows me on Twitter. It would have been a thing. So maybe, maybe I was. You, maybe you manifested it but first. You, you fit better. I don't understand. You said that earlier. I don't understand what you mean. Well, by you that. just listed a bunch of fucking random ass names I've never heard before that he's covered. That you also know. I don't do that. But you think our Italian uh, friend, I mean, maybe, but I don't think he cares what, what you listen to. That's, a, that's just the shit he's don't, on. because I'll try and steal this gig. <laughs> well, you would have it way before me, but. No, I think you fit. Look at that fucking hat and beard. My beard's still coming through and I'm old as fuck. Dude, it's, look, it's looking good. That is cut, like, from the right-hand side, which you probably can't see. If you're listening to this, you definitely can't see it. You could hear it. <laughs> but, like, from the, the right-hand side is coming in. The right-hand side is a beard. Left-hand side is more of, like, a Leonardo DiCaprio beard. <laughs> you know, the one where it's, like, shitty? But it's coming. Got right. hit by the iceberg. That shit's coming. Dude. It's the bone of pills, I'm telling you. You tried uh, shaving it a bunch. Shave it, let it grow out. Shave it, let it grow out. I just don't want to. Maybe I some hate castor the way I oil. Look. I hate the way I look. Shave. It's coming through. I got an app for it. It's helping. 
like a my fitness app. oh it's like my that, fitness pal it's like yeah, it's my fitness pal my fitness uh insulin needle um have you ever have you ever done like a <laughs> Uh, <coughs> vaping on the podcast I'm sorry and I coughed because the US vapes are fucking insane they hitting you it's so bad what is, is that a, like mango peach I'll tell you what this is right now it is strawberry <laughs> Stra- strawberry straw how would you say strawberry 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 There's, the, the R's turn to hairy strawberry strawberry pina colada am I saying that right colada Pina colada. Pina. Pina colada. Americans are crazy like this, right? You will pronounce words that are a complete foreign word. Sometimes you will pronounce it in the most American way on purpose, like croissant. Or like a, like a grassy ass. Yeah. That, okay, edit that out for sure. No, you didn't fucking, no. But um, Americans, <laughs> Americans... But sometimes you'll drop a pina colada. What would you say? Pina. Pina. Pina colada. See, <laughs> nah, dude. But then, and also like guillotine. But doesn't Americans th- go like a guillotine, like Guill- a fucking French person? Yeah. But you'll say croissant. But doesn't croissant. the doesn't the n in in pina colada doesn't it isn't it like a nya? I or, mean, probably. Pina. And so it's yeah, but my, my my beef is like Americans either say everything in its native tongue or nothing. Uh, I like to go for the nothing route. I can roll an R. <laughs> like what? Uh, S- Scottish people roll roll their R's like crazy. Scottish the Scottish are they're brave. They got brave hearts, bro. Come on. And they fucking hate English people because of brave heart. Really. Because of the the true story behind, but they fucking hate me. Scottish people hate me immediately, and then I start talking to them, and then they always go, "Oh, you're all right for an English person." And then I explain both my parents are Scottish, and they go, "That's what it is. You're a Scottish person with an English voice." Welcome back home, son. In that accent, yeah. Welcome back to Scotland, boy. If you don't like it, you can get the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was about to say something from like a bumper sticker, but I couldn't even make something up quick enough in time. I stand for my flag, my my babies and my dogs, my truck, okay, and my right to bear arms. Don't tread on me, son. Don't tread on me, except the government can slightly tread on me. Yeah. Anyway, Dude, I, that, that's I love, actually now getting into offensive territory. I'm sorry. No, I love I love where I'm from, man. For a long time, I think that I uh, I had convinced myself because there were so many stereotypes about the South that I should I had convinced myself like oh, I'm actually ashamed to be where I'm from. But uh, especially being a musician, I think all good music comes from most good music comes from pain, and uh, I found ways to embrace it, but not like necessarily take on like all of the the ideals of you know everything that happened yeah you got some shady shit yeah some shady past the um but it's up to like the new like generation of southerners to change that or not not change it but treat people better and like act with love and treat everybody equally and uh there's there's still a lot of old just uh old hate that's stuck in in people and that get passed down generation to generation and literally it's, the last podcast i did about five hours ago with tom we talked about exactly about this oh really yeah. not that we can't talk about it but it's just funny that because because i'm in america now i feel like i'm putting like let's talk about america a bit yeah, on yeah. things like a fucking you know it's a regional fucking thing uh um and I don't think about in my head. I just think, oh, the young people will figure this out. But you forget that you got the you got some old shitheads that then teach their kids to be young shitheads, and then they teach their yeah shit babies to be shithead babies. Some people need to be slapped open handedly. Boom, guys. I know what you're thinking. You're looking well on this podcast. You're in Nashville, but you're you're glowing, Craig. 
Well, I want to talk about foundational nutrition. If you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you will know I've been taking AG1 for about six months. In that time, I've pretty much got rid of all of my biohacking supplements, vitamins, because AG1 has them all in one scoop. That's because AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. Since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your baseline health. I take one scoop of AG1 with 250 milliliters of water every single morning. Sometimes I bump it up to 450 milliliters of water if I'm a little bit thirsty. Even on tour, I use the travel packs, which are a godsend because tour is about two things other than music, being stressed and getting sick. And thanks to AG1 and stuff in it like stress adaptogens like ashwagandha, vitamin C, magnesium, my stress levels and my immune system are supported on a cellular level. I've been taking it for six months. You know I wouldn't be telling you that it rocks if it didn't rock. When have I ever been wrong? That's why AG1 has been a partner for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash the downbeat. That's drinkag1.com forward slash the downbeat. Check it out. What do you feel about guns? Are you a gunman? I think they're... I think they're real fun. That's the issue, isn't it? They're so much fun. They are fun. And like it or not, they've been made really cool by movies and by video games. My So my, my thing with guns... But, but they do kill people. Just like that. Was that double yeah. bass or... No, uh, that, was, that was either... Slaughter to prevail, or like an AR fifteen yeah. on fucking on the triple little, bu- little, little burst. Um, I think that uh, I think that the problem with guns are they exist, and you can't be, and you can't take it back now, right? Because if you make a law against it, would be fucking way worse. Because all uh, there's people out there that could give two shits about the law. Um, I mean, we're kind of sitting here, you know, do you, neither one of us really care that much about the law, you know? I, I'm breaking those things, bro, right. brother. All of them. I'm breaking everything. It doesn't involve hurting someone. I'm breaking it. Right. And that's, I think that's like the, the thing, but I, I don't know. I'm this sh- is, this I'm is sh- such I'm a shoplifting. <laughs> are you? A little bit. You're going to end up not being able to tour, bud. They're not crazy shoplifting. I'm not... This is a joke. <laughs> um, no, like, if I'm at a self-checkout... You got self-checkouts here? Yeah. I need to be paid for my labor. They took... They took a job away <laughs> from took someone. took 5%. They took a job away from someone and made, gave it to a robot, and then who kept the profits? They did, and they put the prices up yet I'm packing my own fucking bags? Mm-mm. Uh, uh, uh. Those limes are going through as onions. That's it. That's I'm not, smart. I'm not like fucking shoplifting yeah. things. I'm like, oh, oops, I pressed the button. Wrong. Yeah. Never been caught. No, that's that's fine. Never been fucking caught. No, Pay your workers better and I'll stop stealing. It's always limes. It's only limes. They're so expensive. Why? Bro. They're so expensive in the UK. Why'd you have how, to? How much a single steal lime, the lime cost? How much a single lime cost? Bro. I'm a lime stealer, bro. I don't remember the last time I, I, I purchased a lime. Yeah, because you're stealing them. Because they're so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is, dude. You can't walk out of the house without spending $100. Limes grow on trees in Alabama? What do your trees grow? Uh, pecans. Um, a nut? Yeah. Does that go on a tree? I thought nuts grew underground. No. <laughs> I'm so dumb. <laughs> now we got pecans. We got we got all kinds of trees. We got peach trees. Peach. Peaches. That I really I don't see in the wild. I get my peaches down in Georgia. Say it. I get my weed from California. That's my ish. 
Dude. Wait, wait, wait. No, I've, I'm trying to find out the price of a lime. Guns are sick, though. I'll say it. They're sick, but they it's kill. The people that yeah, suck. They kill so many people. No, people. Suck. But you can't. You can't go back on it though. That's the issue. There's no. I have this conversation because I got loads of really, really lefty people, and I'm, I'm really fucking lefty, pretty much. But also, I know where. You're never gonna change it. Mm. If you pl- pass the blanket law, that, like, if you did it now, UK did it when someone shot up a school we passed the law immediately because it was like the first time it really had maybe happened like a fucking handful of times and we went okay let's nip this in the bud but now here you've had guns for so long it's part of your culture it's really sad though like I, I see like especially from y'all's perspective like I can't imagine uh, I remember talking to uh, one of the guys from asking and they lived over here for a while but he was like I'm about to move back because I just got some kind of notification uh, that at my my child's school they're gonna have some kind of drill for like a you yeah, know that's crazy and so he's like i i can't do that I, so we got to move back home and it's very it's very out of hand i think in i don't know bro i googled limes we'll come back to asking alexandria because i have a funny story that happened to me with asking alexandria last month um when you google limes the second suggested search why are limes so expensive 2023 no way how much um or is it very the last year 200 limes could be purchased from distributors for about 15 bucks the same box in 2023 is between 80 to 130 oh my god why and this is the question. Why has the citrus fruit risen so sharply? <laughs> um, a limes each Walmart, 33 cents. That's cheaper than back home. We're, we're, we're rocking like a 50p, which is like 60 cents. Mm. A lime? Pfft. I need three for a margarita. I'm not trying to spend... You need three to juggle as well. Spend, exactly. And I'm juggling before I have the margarita. I'm not trying to spend three pounds on limes. Onions, however, by the weight... Mm. three limes that's a light cents. onion that is a fucking one light onion <laughs> i'm getting three limes for like 10 cents uh, damn that's... you know what i learned about uh stealing what from big companies like walmart just like these things in general i shouldn't have said that huh? is uh and i th- this is all a joke and i made it all up but they have to do the stock check and they have to pay as if they sold the item. Uh, if anything is low, they have to pay the distributor as if they sold the item. So the big bad business is the only thing that gets hurt by the stealing. This is now a pro stealing podcast. I wonder if this will be. And maybe it's uh, maybe that's karma, you know? It fucking, it certainly is. Anyway, that was a joke and it's a really funny joke. Mm. For any monetization purposes, that was a funny joke. If you're from a boner pill company, you were thinking about sponsoring the podcast, but now you're worried about thieves, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, ignore it as a joke. Nothing, nothing to worry about here. Bleach you. I love the fact we haven't talked about drums, but I feel like we might have to. Let's talk about it. I fucking hate it, bro. No, you don't. You ever hate the drums? When I'm when I'm setting them up because oh, I just don't do that anymore. I convince myself that I I need to come home with more money, so I'll just tech myself. Let me tell you about paying for a tech. Okay, it is worth. Don't listen to this, Gabe. It is worth. <laughs> triple what you would pay i gave gabe a pay rise out of nowhere because i wanted him to just continue doing it i was just like hey i'm just gonna pay you more nice as a as a like incentive like you're doing a, such a great job and you are now invaluable to me can i just give you more money mm. not as like like a, a secret threat not even a threat just like please continue to do this for me because it's just it made music fun again setting up drums fucking sucks yeah dude and i hate it when people are like i'll have dudes come up and be like 
dude, I, I like the way you keep your drums clean and I like how you, you know, you tune and everything. Like, would you ever consider like teching for me? I'm like, bro, you might as well just like slap me in the face. Right I'd now. rather work in an office. Yeah. That's a lie. I'd rather teach the drums than drum tech. Yeah. Because I'm never not going to do anything that's to do with drums. I taught the drums for 10 years and I loved it. You taught? Yeah. 10 years, baby. I've got a degree in music. Are you serious? I can't do fucking maths, but I've got a degree <laughs> in music. Yeah. It's drums though. You're doing math. You just I, don't yeah. know. I taught the drums for 10 years. It was my... Yeah, it paid fucking well as well. I hear it does. So I, I didn't have lessons. I learned everything either just by listening to it or looking up uh, YouTube stuff. You know Gavin Harrison? Love him. Met him for the first time the other day. Uh, so that was the first guy I can honestly remember finding his YouTube channel. Woo, that little tiny snare. Oh, my God. <laughs> but... I never, I never took lessons and I'll have guys be like, Hey, like, I, you know, do you, do you, would you ever consider teaching me or something like this? And I want to s desperately, like, I think we were talking about the whole giving back thing. Mm. I, I want to teach one day. I just think I need to just jump in and do it instead of thinking about it so hard. Because in my mind, I'm like, well, what if I, what if I tell them something wrong or what if I teach them the wrong way? But all, I think every teacher is different, right? Yeah. So if I just taught him like what I know, the, it'd be it, fine. I heard a recent wise word of wisdom from Mike Johnston, mm. pro drum teacher, the you know first online drum school type guy. And I, I, I would love to have passed this off as my own wisdom, but it wasn't. Um, and he was talking about how like people come up to him and say, I want to teach, but I'm not good enough to teach. Or how do I know if I'm good enough to teach? And he was like, the distance between you and the student is what tells you. Like, someone who has been playing the drums for two years mm. can teach someone who's never played the drums before. Even if they're not the best drummer in the world. I get, where you, I get what you're you saying. You can start them on your journey if the distance between the two of you is far enough. Yeah. So, like, anyone can teach. Eddie Thrower... Again, I'm just shouting Amazing out the drum, the drum podcast, but doesn't sight read. Phenomenal teacher, though. Like, really? you don't need to do it. I, my thing with sight reading, so I, I can sight read and I taught all my students to sight read from day one. And it was easier for them to go away and remember what I said because it was written down. And when you teach them from day one, it's just like fucking reading a fucking language. So it meant that I could go on tour for extended periods of time and they had sheets of shit to work through. And when I come back, I can be like, okay, play this. And they go, I don't know how to play it. And I'm like, it's on that fucking sheet and you can read it. Yeah. So that's on you, not on me. But um, the other reason is in the UK, you get these things called grade books, which I don't think you have in the States. And they are like accredited from a school. So they're grades one to eight. Mm-hmm. And it is a book, and obviously one is like beginner. There's like a pre-grade, and then there's one, two, three, all the way to eight. And they get progressively hard, and they, they teach you everything in drumming basically by the end of it. Wow. But they are affiliated with universities and stuff. So when you get to grade six and above, you can use those points to get into a better college later on. So the minute you started, I started doing the, offering those lessons... The parents can then see, like, because I would put the kids in for their exam and everything, but the parents would, would be able to tangibly see the progression from the kid. Like, he did grade one last year. He's on grade two this year. I had some kids that went grade one, grade two, grade five, grade eight, because they just loved it so much. And wow. me and them clicked. They had everything to go away with. But the, you get the parents on board. Oh, it's game over. It was fucking. It was like if you got a student and you, the teacher, which I was fucking good at. I'm sure the payoff too felt great. Oh, bro, best, I've talked about it on the podcast a million times before, but the best, the, my proudest moment in my entire life was taught teaching a at times nonverbal autistic boy who had never sat an exam in his life. Did it went to a different school that didn't do exams, like you know, on the on the autistic spectrum. I taught him how to sight read and then he sat some exams and he'd never even sat like a fucking maths exam or anything before. That's like the, my proudest fucking moment ever. Oh, I'm sure. 
But like, if you, the teacher, could instill the love of the instrument on the, in the yeah. first six lessons, I then knew like, okay, this kid loves it. And from a business point of view, it's like, I have at least five years of work from this now. Yeah. Work doesn't fucking feel like work. But so I had fucking, at one point I had 25 students and they were paying 30 pounds a lesson. I had 25 of them a week. Wow. I was making big fucking money. It was yeah, awesome. Brother. But I missed paying. I don't know. Does it stretch you though? As like, as a drummer though? Like the, because. Teaching. I, yeah. That's something I thought about is like, maybe if, especially like teaching an advanced drummer. I hated doing that. Really? Because, because in this day of technology, if you're already an advanced drummer, anything you want to learn, you can just go on the internet and find yeah. out. You've already got your building blocks in your head. You, you either learn well or you learn badly by this point. If you're advanced, you fucking figure it out yourself. I get it if you have like an ergonomical question about how to sit or whatever, go to a fucking expert. But... I would hate it when people would come because I was in Stray and it was teach just Teach me like, a Stray it, song. Teach me a Stray teach song. Teach me guitar. And, and and, but if you're coming to me to learn to, to learn that, then I don't think you're good enough to learn it yet. Because you kinda should be able to figure it out. Yeah. To an extent. But in my experience with it, it was mainly people that wanted to just pay to come and hang out. Right. And then they the, wanted well, they that did, experience. So I would give them the benefit of the doubt on episode one, teach me how to play the song. I would teach them and then they would come back the next week. They haven't practiced it. And then it's like almost, it was weird. It was almost like me. It felt and then like you don't me like and them. And then I hate them. Yeah. And they're a fan of my band. I don't hate them, but you know, I would dread the lesson. Yeah. Whereas the kid who is getting better every lesson, enjoying it. Yes, I'm far more advanced than them, but. I can see their progress is way... And that makes you want to invest more. Yeah, way more than like someone that just wants to hang out. Yeah. My my cousin actually has a son that uh, is hearing impaired. And he's got he's got a crazy hearing aid. It's like one that like goes up like on his head. And he heard me playing drums. Like I had my, my kit set up in my parents' garage when I came home from tour. And I was over there practicing. And he heard me from inside the house. I guess he was like feeling the vibrations and everything. Uh, didn't ask them or anything. He just like walked out of the house, walked into the garage. Little, like he was very young at the time. And he just like stood there in like in awe. And I was like, you, you want to play him? And dude, the joy on his face whenever he like was hitting the drums. It made me, it made me want to like want to cry. Not to be like soft on the podcast, but I'm soft on the podcast all the time, except for my bonus. They are fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by. But dude, there's no, there's no greater feeling, and I think. Wait, so he had the hearing aid in, so he could hear the drums. Oh, but he could hear it without the hearing aid, and that was the joy. Yeah, so we would turn. I think they would basically because it was so loud. Turn with the gain it on. down. We just, I, I don't know if they turn it off or they turn the gain down, but uh. I think it had something to do with like the vibrations of everything that he was a dude ecstatic. He like, he's never, he, and he races, he like races cars and, and stuff. He's like a little guy. He does like the little mini dragsters and stuff. So, so, um, yeah, we have a, we have a drag strip, like two minutes from where I live. Is that where the traffic light is? To tell them to go. It's right past it. <laughs> it's right past it. That's the second joke I've made that's been accurate. I was gonna when you said the the woman on the talk radio, yeah, saying I want to make her, his dick harder than his life. Yeah, I was gonna make a boner joke before you even said that. I'm on that fucking advanced grade eight comedy shit. <laughs> Uh, I've got two like points that I want to get into. I don't even know what we're on time wise. Oh, we're fucking. We are far, bro. How are long we? do you think we've been talking for? Um, I don't know. We talked. We we talked about some. Uh, talked about Bluetooth for a minute. <laughs> Sorry, was that too much Bluetooth? We didn't talk about Bluetooth for that long. I feel. I'm convinced. 
at, by the blue chews uh, i mean disclaimer it's not actually blue chew let's not give them a fucking ad they can give me some money it's the same drug they put in blue chew it's not blue chew it's not blue chew and it's, it, it might be new man if blue it, chew it wants be, it to be blue chew then they can they can come they talk can fucking give me some of that money let me t- i'll sell more boner pills than <laughs> jordan belfort <laughs> I'm gonna put the uh, put the the downbeat pentagram on. Them. I'll the, make a fucking merch design about boners, bro. Pentagram made of boners. It's happening. I just realized how how many podcasts I have to do. I need to fucking. Yeah, you're a man on a mission here in the U.S. of A. This is my work for the year. I'm proud of you. Thank you, brother. It's been a manifestation. Also, I also with that it. comes hard work, though, and you I, put all the work behind it. I have insane imposter syndrome with it, though. I think that's normal. Like crazy imposter syndrome. That's how I feel about everything. I feel like I'm, like, deep down, I'm just Forrest Gump. I feel like I've, I've accidentally manifested my life being a Forrest Gump. Like, right now, I'm in the stage where he's running. And You're just pretty stationary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about my beard and my hair. Like, he's just... Yeah, but he looks sick, man. Yeah, but I'm running, brother. Even though I'm sitting down, I stay running. This sounds like you mean something really deep by it, but I don't know if you have the you have the backup. It just sounds good. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is what I'm talking about. Do you find lifting? Because you, you're a lifter. How long have you been lifting? Uh, I took it a lot more serious a few years ago, but uh, I've been lifting probably since I was, damn, maybe nine years now, I think. What got you into it? Uh, my dad originally. Fuck yeah. We yeah. love it. Like American uh, muscle. I wish no shade on my dad because I love music because of how much my dad loved music. So I don't want him to change at all. Mm. Kind of. They were just so. I was such a lazy kid and they were so supportive of me being fucking lazy. Like I went to like football clubs and shit like that and then I was just like, I don't want to do this. And they were like, okay. But I kind of wish. He would have lifted. Just uh, yeah. Y'all didn't watch like strongman competitions or anything with yeah, with the Olympics. And I'd still, what I'd watch that shit. Channel five at fucking Christmas, I'd watch that shit. Yeah. At no point, I I had singers in old bands that would get into lifting, and, and it just didn't interest me. And then I had one breakup. Mm. And, and you shift. Like, you found a way to channel the and pain. I like, and I, the, yeah, I need yeah. to get fucking wham. Mm-hmm. So that's why I started. But you had that family family shit. Well. I think I think mine kind of like because my dad was lifting, you know, when I was when I was a kid. I I was a buck fifty when I graduated That's high school. That's one hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty pounds. One hundred and fifty pounds, which will be what's that? Seventy light kilos. Light. I was a little toothpick. What's one hundred and fifty pounds in kilos? Sixty eight point nine four. Yeah, but also at like six one. So I oh, that is you a fucking tall drink of water. I was a, I was a stretch by no imagination. Uh, I played basketball, so they would run us a lot, but we didn't you weight are train. Tall. Um, but uh, I think it was the same thing for me. Actually, I think I ended up going through a breakup, but had a friend that was in uh, into powerlifting and. I didn't know much about it, but what what was intriguing about powerlifting is instead of like being all about like how I looked, it was like a sport against myself, and I thought I found like comfort in that. Yeah, because I'm hard on myself. Uh, I feel like that's the only way I ever uh, made it out of Alabama playing drums was just because I was like I got to get better progression yeah and so, when you can feel it happening and see it happening it's oh, when, you, when you see it happen dude when i started i couldn't uh i couldn't bench 90 pounds like a bar and 225s on each i couldn't do it one time and uh so there was maybe the maybe something about the like okay i can't do it but maybe if i like keep doing it and then the pain involved i feel like there's so many life lessons there where it's like in in order to uh to progress in in most things in life, it, it's it's uncomfortable, um, and something I think the the life lessons in it and everything, and also just for the first time in my life being like jacked. I'm not anymore, but 
And you're, you're still a big dude, though. Thank you. I'm you trying to get back gym into it. You were fucking popping out of that fucking sleeveless. <laughs> My, you know, you know them what little sucks? love handles you know, is popping you, out. You know what sucks? I, I can't do a sleeveless anymore. Why? And and not like I'm by any stretch of the imagination like ideal physique, but I feel like I'm at that weird like weird stage of being like slightly ripped, where it's like look at this motherfucker in his sleeveless. Dude, if, no, if I can, you definitely can. No, because you just look like a fucking hard bastard. We would call that at home. I, I, feel, I feel like I look like this guy fucking loves himself. I just don't care. I'm I'm in that that phase where I'm like I know I'm and I'm getting a little chunky and I've been out of the gym for a while, but also I wear the sleeveless. But you're not out of the gym for a while. You're back in the gym. You came with me, and you would have said no. People always say no to yeah. me. But I also love how it it translates into uh into drumming. Like I that's what I was getting at. That's what I was going to get to. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like uh. Like we talked about deadlifts, like how loose you feel like after doing deadlifts and then it's going and playing a show. Best. Why can't I get that from any warm up or any stretch? I, I want to know. I want someone to just tell me. Oh, it's this. Could it be the like decompression of the spine that it gives you? That and I feel like once you just picked up some heavy ass weight, the sticks feel much lighter. Are you talking about upper body? I'm talking about lower body. Lower body, you feel good with the feet after you do that that stuff. I feel insane. Yeah. Dude, so we played Orlando one night. And I specifically remember reading set times before we left. I go to the gym. I was with uh, with uh, Jared, who used to play with Fit for a King. Now he plays with Co Wetzel. Uh, who plays for Fit for a King? Now? Trey. Trey who? Okay. I'm going to pronounce his name wrong. How long? When did this happen? Um, Damn, dude. It's been like, it's been a little while at least. I know Jared's been playing with Co for a minute and Trey. Interesting. I didn't know that. Anyways. Yeah. I was at the gym with Jared and I get a call like, where are you? Like we're going on stage right now. And dude, I was, I was like a 25 minute walk from the. Venue. I know this feeling well. I ran the entire way, and I get Forrest in. Gump. Yes, dude. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's where. It, yeah, that's where it started. Did I walk in and David Puckett had set up my entire drum set, and was sound checking it when I walked in. And dude, I felt so bad. Did he charge you? He should have. He was a saint about it. <laughs> the though. guy's a businessman. That, that was my business yeah. man joke. <laughs> no, he could have. For some reason, uh. For some reason he had grace on me, but no, I'm very thankful. But also, what? I don't. That's how obsessed I was with it for for a and minute. Why aren't you back there? I'm I'm so obsessed. Mm. I'm like, bro, I'd go every single. I go when I'm at home. I go every day. I run myself into the ground. I get worse at all my lifts. But I'm addicted to being there. So that's where I am now with like trying to with creativity. So I told you I had the injury. I was like training yeah. for my first meet. Pulling the fat deadlift. What were you trying to pull? 500? Yeah, I was trying to pull five. Messed it up. It was actually, I tried to do that. And then the following week was trying to pull 80% of, you know, the percentages. Yeah. Um, and then I ended up injuring it more. So pull out of the meet. And then that whole tour, I was just like, okay, I'll just focus on getting better at drums. Because it's been a while since I just focused on music. And dude, it made me realize how, dude, how far behind I had gotten because I got obsessed with lifting. I think you're in, you're in your head about that. Oh, always, a hundred percent. I always am, but I'm trying to get back now where it's there's some kind of middle ground, and uh, also just the fact that it does help, like it complements each other, even with when, lyric writing. When, really? Yeah. Do you know how many Gideon songs I wrote in the gym? Sick. Is there any gym lines? You ever hear that band Discarnate from the UK? I've grown to love the pain. That's like, that's, you know? That's fucking awesome. I guess. More power, more pain is like, uh, so even though I've been out of it for a minute, like it's still like life lessons that I like carried. And that's kind of like the whole thing with our, the record we released recently was just uh, the fact that in order to achieve more power, 
you, you got to go through like the pain. You come up with that but in you, the gym, but you beg for you beg for more of it. So you're okay with you know whatever it takes. So you can get more power. Yeah. You take the pain. Yeah. Super cliche. Yeah, but it's sick. That's some Batman shit. Is it? I love Batman. Yeah, it's so that Batman. was my dude growing up. Yeah, same. Yeah. I was a Batman guy. I was not any Marvel. I was DC. Yeah, Marvel sucked my fucking hard boner. Until Tobey Maguire stepped to the scene. And then I was I liked that Spider-Man movie a lot. Ugh. That kind of shifted me for a second. I don't give a goddamn shit if someone <laughs> got superpowers from something. I just don't care. That's why Batman was cool, right? He's yeah, but like, now I've grown up. It's like billionaire trust fund cop lover. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, I feel that. But at the time, the, the thing with Batman was that wasn't the message. The message was never like, he loves the rules. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it didn't come across. But now, like, I, I rewatched the Nolan Batman, and they're like some of my favorite films of all time. Yeah. And I rewatched them, and I just think, I bet Bruce Wayne kind of sucked. Dude, Arnold as Mr. Freeze in Batman Forever is one of the funniest things. That, uh, Batman and Robin. It's Batman and Robin. It's the worst film of all time. Which one's Batman Forever then? Batman Forever is actually sick. Batman Forever is Jim Carrey Riddler. Yeah, I thought that's the same one. No. Batman and Robin, Mr. Freeze. Bro, my brain is gone. If, I mean, you're not missing much with these movies. Batman Forever is Mr. Freeze. Uh, and Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy, Bane. The worst fucking Bane. bastard bastardized bane because bane in the comics was the sickest yeah. shit ever and this dude was that just might like, have been <laughs> yeah this guy was just like <laughs> fucking whatever um but batman forever yeah i realized this the other day like that parents stop listening to this like and i'm sure it's like every guy has this but like i got a real poison ivy no i got a um... real like this is like the toxic male podcast right now. Hit it. I got a real like two girls thing. Ah. Oh. And the other day it clicked in my fucking head. Two girls and like, you know, I guess a kink. We, we talk about kink. Two girls and the two girls being complete opposites. Uh huh. And the other day I rewatched Batman Forever and there's fucking Tommy Lee Jones, Two Face. Yeah. And he's got Drew Barrymore and someone else. And I was like, oh. Mm -hmm. That was a big year in my development. All right. So are you, uh, are you Tommy Lee Jones? I mean, I'm not. He Tommy not, Lee Jones. Not by name or by face. But I feel like <laughs> the, movie, the movies you watch when you're a kid, this is just literally going to be all about bonus. The movies <laughs> you watch when you're a kid. Like. Oh, like dude. fully change who you are as a man like like in terms of sexual preferences and shit right or any of this shit what's the uh what's the so in batman and robin the girl that plays batgirl uh alicia silverstone enough said and when their suits went to the silver you know what i'm talking about it's crazy <sighs> this is toxic bro no, I'm talking about also Batman and Robin suits too. It was just crazy. Those movies uh, were were very sick. I even remember the one. Uh, remember the old one uh, with uh, dude. I'm horrible with names. With Penguin and Joker. It I was, mean, that's two. I separate, think it was this two separate movies. No, 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 no. This was like. A, oh, you're talking about the TV show? No. There was a what the fuck? There's no yeah. There's Batman. I think Tim it was. Burton. I think it was just Batman. Yeah, that that doesn't have penguin. Penguins in Batman Returns. Don't come to me like you no, love look Batman. It up. Look it up. Look it I up. I don't have to look it up. Danny DeVito as Penguin. Batman Returns with Catwoman. Batman Returns. And Joker wasn't in that one. That was in Batman. So you're telling me. You mean to tell time, me? Time <laughs> is just shrimp fried this right. Time is just warping in my head. Yeah. Wow. But you would have been too young. You you like movies? You a movie guy? We talked about this. Video games and movies. I is do out like movies. I do no. I like movies. 
You got any hobbies that aren't lifting or music? Uh, There's no wrong answer. I try. Answer. Yeah, same, bro. I try. I just can't get like, it. Like, for a while, I had a really good fishing stint where, like, I was really oh, getting nice. into it. I was studying, like, the different types of spinner baits and stuff like that. You'd be the second man of the sea on the podcast. I, uh, I Nick love... Folio. Ah, it's a good man. Loves a fish. Dude, it's really relaxing. Um, very fun. Uh, but... Dude, I don't know. I do love movies though, and and I feel like movies are one of those things I can convince myself that it's it's worth it because you never know what's gonna inspire a song or something like that from it. I need something from you. I need a top five of something. I used to have a thing like a dream festival at the end of the episode, and I fucking hated it. And it, people just didn't get it. And Mine would be it, too weird. Too. Yeah, and I wouldn't get it. It'd be like, oh, old hollering Billy O'Mullins. Oh, he's a he's a fucking country singer from do you know who Helen wolf is no huh oh actually maybe i've heard that one uh, that's a yeah. cool name yeah i've heard of Helen wolf. howling wolf howling 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 there's no g oh it's howling it's not like oh that's what it is well it's howling then and he's chose to remove the g he did or she or they i don't know who who the wolf is Okay, I need your top five musical artists of all time. That's what I'll get from you. Mm. All time. Artists? Are we talking musicians or be, bands? It has to be a band or a solo artist. It's like the, the group or the person. Not like, oh, Gavin Harrison. Okay. They're all for different reasons. I would say uh, number one would probably, this is so Southern to me, but I'm going to say Leonard Skinner. Hell yeah, brother. Not, first of all, not recent Leonard Skinner. I'm talking about the- Wait, there's recent Leonard Skinner. Yeah, so a lot of them died on a plane, like way back in the day. Yeah, but that's not recent. Then. I'm th No, I'm talking about the guys that are playing Leonard Skinner right now. Okay. Maybe not, but. Who died on the plane? No, I mean, don't tell me, but when did that happen? Before I was born, brother. But such a weird in name to spell. I would say them. What's the big Leonard Skinner songs? Uh, fucking it's Freebird. You know Freebird. You know Simple Freebird. Man. You know. Yeah. Give me three steps. Needle on the spoon. It's almost like you're cheating because their their songs are so long. I love them. Also love Led Zeppelin. But those bands made me di uh, dig deep into the blues. So that's where I like Helen Wolf, and I like Robert Johnson. You gotta give me five, and you got you're just okay. giving me a list, and you're Leonard just, Skinner. Leonard Skinner. While we're on Leonard Skinner, do you think that "Bleed" by Meshuggah mm. is our generation's Freebird? <laughs> In terms of like, it's the song that everyone says, "Play Freebird." Now it's "Play Bleed." You get that. Uh, I guess you're not in the streaming world, bro. It's relentless. <laughs> it's relentless. Play bleed, and I can't play bleed. fucking play it. Um, you ever take, try to play bleed? Can you play bleed? Dull, 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 yeah, dull, my favorite. Dull. My favorite part is the. It's fucking heavy. Do you ever hear my remix of it? Maybe. Ash Nico with bleed. Maybe I did. Anyway, Leonard Skinner, numero uno. Leonard Skinner, number one. Is this just going to read like a fucking the back of a Guitar Hero game? No. I would say... Uh, Howling, Bobby... No, I would say Deftones. Ooh. Okay. Side... Abe no. Cunningham. Insane. Like, did a lot for like... Uh, how, why I wanted to play drums like that. Top three Deftones albums. That's what I want from you. If I, so I'll we're changing it. I'll, no, I, this is the segue. This is I used to love. This used to be the segment on the end. And what I'm doing in Nashville is I'm testing new end segments, and everyone's going to tell me what they preferred. Let me finish this. Um, you're not finishing the five. Yeah, I am. No. Yeah. I am. You're gonna you're gonna get to finish the five, but there's a small, real brief, death tone segue. I'd say White Pony first. Correct. I would say. Music is subjective, but that's correct. What do you mean? As in, like, everyone can have their favorite, but that White Pony is the best. I would one. say White Pony, White Pony, White Pony. 
Are you just a white pony head? Yeah. And then I like, uh, I like diamond eyes. Love it. I would go white pony, diamond eyes around the fur. Around the fur. I would go, uh, what's the, uh, one with the colors? Koyo. Koyo no Yokin or something like that. I would say that one instead of. Do you know what that means? No. Oh, this is so sick. But around around the fur is sick, but so I don't butcher it. There are there's certain phrases or words Koi that no different languages have that we don't have an equivalent for, like feelings, mm. and, and like Germans have a load of them, and Japanese has a lot of them, of like emotions that we in English don't have a term for, and Koi no yokan is. The feeling from the first time that you meet someone that eventually you will fall in love. Wow. Yeah. I got tingles there from even saying that out loud. How sick is that? It's amazing. Fucking awesome. Anyway. And you picked around the fur, brother. I'm not picking the name. (laughs) I'd put that four, though. Anyway. Leonard. Yeah. Deathies. Yeah. Dude, I can't even, like, I'm thinking, like, what I've listened to now, though. That's fine. You can do that. You can... Can I just say the five I've been listening to most recently? No, you, you can say three. Three? Father John Misty. Sounds like you made it up, but I have heard that one before. Daniel Caesar. Who's that? R&B singer. Amazing. What's the vibe? A lot of people get nice, nice recommendations from this shit. Um, the vibe is very chill. Um, not, it's something like you could drive to and just like relax. That's, that's what it does to me anyways. But also the, his singing is incredible. Dude, he's got a line that says, uh, pain is inevitable and misery is a choice. I think, and he just repeats that over and over again in one song and I'm here for that. I should fucking take a leaf out of that kind of thinking. Yeah, I'm exactly. fucking miserable all the time. <laughs> okay. You got, what, well, you got one more? Father John, Daniel Caesar, and recently I saw, uh, I saw uh, Chris Stapleton live and it really changed me. Because I was, I was like, I liked him, I but I didn't, who that is he? I liked him, but I didn't really like go, get into his music who that much. It? He's he's a guy that wrote for like Adele. He was a songwriter for a while. Oh. And then he started releasing his own stuff. He did like some rock stuff and then became one of the biggest country artists. Yeah, it's country. I love how much you love country. But it's very I'm bluesy. in Nashville. Look at this guitar. But it's very bluesy. But I can't I can't not say Hank Williams Jr. I have to throw him in there. Um uh we actually the clips that are in between our newest record are uh, little things that uh, that we found. We were basically at the studio with Randy in the kitchen watching uh, YouTube videos. And we were looking up Hank Jr. videos and we found this interview. And everything this dude was saying felt like it had, like it was about our record. And uh, it was him saying, Yeah. Are you allowed to take that? It's not him on the record. Oh, you got someone else. Yeah, we do that all the time. Someone else to say it. Yeah. We had a, we had a, uh, who's the fucking, Mr. Rogers. We had a Mr. Rogers thing. Nice. Who did Couldn't it? Couldn't use it. I can't remember. We got someone else to do it. We had a thing from Barney. Love Barney, dude. Uh, we couldn't use Barney. The thing from the beginning of three, the police will be, no, we couldn't use it. It was originally from Barney. Just had to re-record it. Dude, I almost got the chance to ask him in person if we could just use it. Who, Barney? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Bo Cephas, uh, Hank Jr. Um, but the person that got me into the show um, ended up not being there, so I didn't get to meet him. Damn. Um, yeah, but I love those artists. Um, as far as like metal, I love, I love me some Seven Dust. So American. What's what? Seven Dust never really broke in the UK. Really? 
You ever I, listen to I, Morgan Rose yeah, play drums? Yeah, fucking amazing. Yeah. I, I liked them because of the drumming, but they weren't like big. I found them because I was a Barrier Dead fan. Wow, that's backwards. I loved Barrier Dead, and my dad oh. told me one time, he said, uh, if, you, if you're in, influenced by a band and you like the way they do things, don't just listen to that band. Find out who they're influenced by. That's fucking smart. Uh, so that's how I found Seven Dust and then blown away by this dude playing drums and kind of like changed the way I thought about drums. The first time I heard like a... Can we talk very, very quickly about Bury Your Dead? Yeah. Cover your tracks. Oof. I wish they would just re-record it. I know it has its charm. It's my favorite Very Dead album. I fucking love it. Mm. Every song title is a Tom Cruise movie. Love the joke. Also love Tom Cruise. You want better recording. It's just, just, it's not even, like the recording is quite nicely shit, mm. but it's so fucking like, it's so rough around the edges that I just, I, I would kill the hit. Me and Tom in the pandemic were going to, I think we were going to do Eyes Wide Shut mm. and we were going to re-record it, but we never got around to doing it. Should have just done like a live stream of y'all just playing it live. That's what we were going to do, okay. but like actually track it at the time and That's then sick. re-record it. I think I still might do that. I would like to hear that album in like HD. Yeah. We got we got to end. This is long. Okay. My sugar. Uh, thank, I'm done. Thank God. Best my sugar? Favorite my sugar? I'm Coloss. Swampy. You like it's so swampy. I yeah. never thought about that. That is a man trying to get out of a swamp. Yeah. That's old Greg trying to get out of the swamp. That's yeah. old, nice British reference. Love it. Um, four, Ludwig 402 on that record, I think. Really? It sounds like it. I don't know if, like, I know he loves his bell brass or whatever. I mean, he plays like a big sonar thing. We played a show with him. We were supposed to play three. We played one. Drum tech, sweetest person on fucking planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, the fucking man. Jimmy. Guitarist. Yeah, guitar tech. Fucking sweetest fucking guy on Earth. Met Thomas. Yes. He was nice. Yeah. But we didn't hit it off. I came away being like, I think that guy doesn't like me. And you don't want to come away from meeting your fucking idol with that feeling. And I came away with that feeling. It sucks whenever you're meeting someone for the first time that you look up to because whether you like it or not, you have expectations. Yeah, and I don't think I was punishing either. You probably weren't. And he probably doesn't hate you. You never know. Somebody might have called I him. He hates me, but I think maybe he might just be like, that guy's whatever. I mean, yeah. look at me. Yeah, or maybe like... I would hate me if I didn't know me. Maybe his wife called and but said also, the baby. I'm, cr I'm crushing, so. Yeah. But does he have relax. kids? Um, you are crushing it. Thank you. I meant, I meant fucking boners. Um, does Thomas yeah? have kids? I don't know. We didn't get that far because I fucking read the room. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. You don't have a drum endorsement. Not drums yet. No. I, um, I'm a free agent. So, hey, holla at me. You're doing so much that we didn't even fucking talk about. Zero. Yeah, there was a lot. Giddy to cover. We got too much to fucking cover. I know. Zero, Gideon. I'm I'm gone these days. You find that hell? I, I fuck it. I ain't gonna turn it off. We got. We still have to cover things. My issue is like sometimes people don't get this far in. What do you mean? Just fucking two hours. We're in two hours now. I'll listen to a four-hour podcast. I don't give a fuck. If it's a long enough drive. Everything's a long enough drive if you think about it long enough. Life's a long drive, brother. Yeah, I was looking for something like that. In a Lincoln. Make, making a fucking... In a Lincoln! Um, what I wanted to actually ask you, see, I haven't got my fucking... This was a guest episode. I had fucking no time to think of any fucking questions other than when we were in Chipotle and in the gym. Um... Almost all of Gideon is backing Zero. 
Yeah. So that happened after the pandemic. He needed a band. He hadn't been on tour up to that point. Um, his booking agent called me, which is a good friend of mine, and asked me to send him a video. Adrenaline, his song Adrenaline ended up popping. And so I just, I was like, I'll, yeah, I'll send him the video. I need to be on tour. And Gideon didn't have anything at the time because our booking agent at the time just completely just, I don't know. I don't know. But I wanted to be on tour. I was tired of being at the dealership trying to like pretend that that's what I wanted in life. I basically asked him if he had a guitar player and uh, he was like, well, I, I, I did, but who do you know? So slowly but surely, I mean, I've been playing with with Tyler since uh, we were around 19 or so. So we, I didn't really want to just like hop into something new and not have like somebody. The boys, the yeah. team, yeah. Yeah, so. You obviously uh, work well together. Dude, if I, if, if I could have had it my way, I think the whole band would have just been on tour. <laughs> like, I mean, obviously Gideon would have been, but. I would have it like even I would have been like, hey Dan, like you DJ or something, you know what I mean? But uh, I just wanted my boys there, and it made it. Uh, but it was a pleasant surprise. I mean, Matt ended up being he's he's one of my best friends now. <clears throat> Something's going up. on. You do like him. Is it difficult? Does it clash? Has it ever clashed? Um, like touring schedules. Yeah. We had to play uh, same day at a festival one time. Yeah, but that's actually sick. Did Until you, just... you throw up in front of a crowd. Why? Because you just played too much. Uh, I I think I got overheated or something. I went over the shoulder and just... While bleh. playing? Yeah. Fuck. It was outside. It was at So What Festival. But it, it just clashed for the first time because he went... Uh, Zero had to go to Canada. I had already confirmed that we would do these festivals with Gideon and um, I'm not, I don't know. I feel like if you agree to something and that's, that's what you agreed to do, then I think you should, you should uh, own up to it and you should be a man of your word. And I think that that goes a long way um, in the music industry and everything. Maybe it doesn't like, maybe if it's important enough, I think it goes Do away. It. it goes a long way in life in general. Yeah, true. Uh, but that was the first time it ever crossed, and I had a bit of FOMO. But at the same time, uh, Gideon played my favorite show to date at Incarceration. It was uh, nobody was playing during our set, oh, sick. so That's we just had spot. you had everyone. Yes, and it was just a sea of people and the biggest wall of death i've ever seen during one of our sets but it was very sick fuck yeah so anyone i did what i did anyone that's left not in gideon uh not in zero's band ever get butt hurt by, Who, by to, to yeah. dan yeah i don't know it's literally just that i might like scared to ask yeah fuck yeah because you are literally a four piece yeah but here's the thing with dan is he got a cdl during covid what's the cdl uh, so he can drive big trucks. Hell yeah, brother! So he started driving tour buses. And so he's driven for Gojira. He's driven for Wage War. He's still no Panther. Way. Yeah. I want to get to bus level so Dan can drive us. Right. But he's making he's making grown man money. And so Crazy. I Good like for him. I like to think. I hope he'll drive because zero. I love him. No, I hope that he's just like sees what we're doing and know like I I just hope that he's like happy during those moments where uh when he's on the road. Hope he knows like I'm thinking about him. Maybe like, he'll drive zero. Then you literally have Gideon and Zero. I'm really tired. Yeah, but then at that point I would just like want to play Gideon songs. Cause you're all there. Yeah hop on for one right maybe two couple two three couple two three uh we're gonna fucking end it here all right i got the nice bit that i wanted in that your situation i've had a lovely time we've had a lovely time i love you i love thank you. you for having and me thanks for being here 
I think you need a drum endorsement. Let's get it. I think you should get one. I think someone should give you one. Um, who are you, who? Who do you think? I always say Tama. It's weird. I know a guy. Who knows a guy? Who knows a guy? Uh, Tama is just the best drums in the fucking world. Amen. Um, so I would always say Tama. But I just think you deserve it. And, uh, Thank you for saying that. I recently heard, I'm not going to make you say anything here, but I recently heard that uh, Mine or Simples tried to poach you. So... I would, they, they asked about me. They asked a friend about me. and They love listening to this podcast and then, do they? and then poaching people or people that don't have deals, giving them deals. So I don't know if it's a situation where... I don't know what the situation was, but my friend who plays Mine uh, asked me what I thought about him and asked me if how locked in with Zildja and I am. Yeah, they're trying. They're trying to steal all the yeah, steal all the heavy guys. Right. I've I've played Zildjian since it all started though, and so I've and, tried to remain loyal. Uh, but I'm I'm not on the roster page. You're not on the roster page. No. <laughs> but I'm very thankful for everything that they've done for me, and I'll and I'll say that. Till my dying breath. They, it was in situations where they haven't, they didn't have to help me at all. Like, it um, might be a case of the back scratching goes one way currently, but there's no way like they don't hook you up more if you get bigger or whatever. Right. So it's on me to like. Yeah, you've got to make more fucking content, bro. Yeah. That's what it is. I know. Because like when you post content, I. I write the comment content and that's because I have agreed that this is excellent content and you should make more. I should actually say that in my comment, but when I say the word content, I mean, this is great. Do this more. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I hate the word content and I use it like fucking semi ironically, but I've seen from the pandemic and the amount of shit that I pushed out, just fucking blasted Instagram. And now I'm fucking living easy. Not for like, I mean, like with my sponsors right. and stuff. For like, as in drum sponsors. I'm no, fucking... I, I have the things I need now to like do all that. I don't know because they endorse, like you endorse Road, but I'm with my company. Now, can I say that or no? You can say it, but I'm going to tell you these are better. Okay. Well, so if you want to fight, we can say it. SE Electronics, um, I work with them, and personally, I think they have the best. Well, I, I disagree. Um, I, I, everyone, and that's make, everyone makes good shit. It's, I know yeah, people that swear on some of the SE stuff. But because of them, now I have like more tools for like when I'm home. And I have the I had the Yamaha, the little EAD. I love that thing. It's cool, but I wanted something where the symbols weren't as harsh. I couldn't get away from that. Sure, I do. But a bit of tape over it. I did that. I did uh, oh. foam. Yeah, the foam pad. Foam, foam's fucking overkill. Yeah. Uh, I'm fucking exhausted. I've been doing this all day. Good night, Craig. I love you. I, I, mean, love you too. I mean, let's do something, but let's do something with the cameras off. Okay. Love you all. Uh, thanks for coming. Listen to Gideon. Listen to Zero. Listen to Gideon more, but listen to Zero. Uh, Post Malone, you should hire Jake. If for some reason you don't want Jake, you should hire me. Roll Tad.